Okay, I'm going to give some straight uh, stoichiometry problems uh, for you involving either solutions, well not really solutions, that's for later, but more or less involving masses and moles and so on. So the typical, you know, entry level stoichiometry problems that you take in grade 11. And um, But first of all, before we do them, uh, let's talk about some terms you need to be familiar with. Of course, the word stoichiometry itself, you might want to look these terms up if you don't know what they are. Percent yield, limiting reagent, these tend to go hand in hand. The mole, and atomic mass. So there you go. And um, let's move on. Let's um, do some problems with stoichiometry. So uh, you're given 8.63 grams of sulfur. Calculate the number of sulfur atoms in the sample. So you have 1.620 times 10 to the 23rd sulfur atoms. Question 2. You're told that a sample of copper 2 nitrate contains 3.48 times 10 to the 24 molecules. Uh, find the mass of the sample. And the answer is 187.56 grams. Um, I wouldn't say, I would hesitate to say per mole, I shouldn't have said that, okay, but this should be 187.56 grams. We were asked to find the mass, not the molar mass. So um, f to do that question, to do question number two, we need to be able to convert the name of the copper compound to the correct formula, and uh, you know, and you're going to find later on, not only are you supposed to do that, but you're also supposed to work out a chemical equation. A sample of a compound is found to contain 0 .0 or 0 0.9 grams of calcium and 1.6 grams of chlorine. Find the percent composition of the compound. All right, you might want to reflect on the fact that the total mass of your compound could be just found by adding this to this. So the percent composition is really a no-brainer. Uh, you just take this and multiply by, or divide by your total mass, and then you take this, multiply that by your total mass, or divide by your total mass, that is, and multiply by 100 respectively, and you get 36% calcium, 64% chlorine. A scientist analyzes a 50 gram sample and finds that it contains 13.3 grams of potassium, 17.7 grams of chromium. He later finds the formula to be potassium dichromate, K2Cr2O7. Notice here that there's some oxygen we didn't exactly talk about either, but of course we have to consider it. What is the percent composition of potassium dichromate? Well, I came up with 26.6% potassium, 35.4% chromium, and 38% oxygen. Okay, so let's do one work problem uh, for those of you who need to be taken through a little more slowly. But to be honest with you, 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 have, to be, you have to be okay at this or at least be able to follow a grade 12, um, a, a grade 12 level um, problem, which of course assumes you know this already. So iron burns in air to form a black solid oxide, Fe3O4. Write the equation for the reaction. And uh, so that becomes three irons plus two oxygens, making Fe3O4 solid. How many moles of oxygen are needed to burn one mole of iron? As you can see here, you can get your stoichiometric ratio from considering the a stoichiometric coefficients on the iron and the oxygen respectively and you get two-thirds moles of O2. How many grams of oxygen is that? How many grams of oxygen? Now remember oxygen we're not considering to be O, it's O2 so the 16 that's on your periodic table has to be multiplied by 2 to get 32 grams so it's not two-thirds of 16 but it's two-thirds of 32 and that's 20.33 grams approximately. Can 5.6 grams of iron burn completely in 0.05 moles of O2? 5.6 grams of iron burn completely in 0.05 moles of O2. Well, okay, <coughs> let's see if that works. We could, for example, see how much O2 does it take, in fact, to burn 5.6 grams of iron.
And if it takes more than 0.05 moles, then we don't have enough oxygen. But if it takes less than 0.05 moles, we do have enough oxygen. Okay, so let's do that. And I just set it up. I basically, in this part here, all I'm doing is calculating how many moles of iron I have. And over on this part, I'm using the stoichiometric ratio of oxygen to iron, two-thirds. So what do I get? 0 0.067. Well, that's a number greater than 0 0.05. So no, there's not enough oxygen. And that's it for... Uh, for this uh, part of the series, the next part of the series will concern solutions and solution chemistry.